So you want to get into a PhD program. You go apply to a competitive program, but then you're asked to write something, a statement of purpose. For me, when I confronted this, I sort of winged it. I was terrible at writing and nobody had told me how it was supposed to go. I did okay. I did well enough to get into the program, but after looking, I really could have done it a lot better. Let me show you how exactly I would write a statement of purpose today. For context, I'm an assistant professor at R1 institution in the United States. I got my PhD in mathematics, spent some time in engineering postdocs, and then I went back into math in my current position. I have five PhD students I am currently managing and helping along in their research. And so that's who I am. And let me see if I can help you understand how to do this. The biggest thing you need to ask yourself about a statement of purpose is what the concerns of the people looking at your statement are. What they want to know is if they admit you into the program, will you be able to do research effectively and graduate with your PhD on time? On time being somewhere between say five and eight years. Many really promising students fall flat on their face when it comes to doing research. Uh, the open-ended nature of research can be scary and it's easier to shelter in the more rigid framework of classes and well-trodden homework assignments. I have personally seen people come in with 4.0 GPAs from undergrad and spin their wheels in graduate school only to leave after three or more years without a PhD. If they could have been identified earlier, we could have actually saved them a lot of time and money, but that's not really easy to do. A PhD student that takes a really long time to graduate is another issue. Graduate students can be given teaching assistantships, depending on the field, but there's a limit to how many a department can grant. If someone has taken an inordinate amount of time, say like 10 years, then they held on to an assistantship that could have gone to someone else. These are two things that a committee is really trying to avoid. The second issue could be identified if someone is lacking in certain coursework, so they might take a bit of time to shore it up, and so that could extend how long they're actually in graduate school for. But for the first issue, that's what you're gonna be trying to convince them that you are not. So how can you convince someone that you are gonna be successful at research? You need to outline a plan. You need to figure out roughly what you want to do and several people that could be your mentors. If you have done undergraduate research, even if it's in a field totally unrelated, that can be a good indication that you are aware of what you're getting yourself into. The more organized you appear and confident in what you want to do, suggests that you aren't a passive student, but someone that is assertive and also confident. One thing that's important to remember is that you aren't signing a contract here. If you find something more interesting after you arrive in graduate school, then you'll be able to change your mind. I thought I'd be doing number theory when I first applied to graduate school, and later I switched to functional analysis. You just really want to show that you've given this some real thought. Now, the next bit is also really important. You want to answer the question, why them? Why that university? What makes it special that you want them to be the one that grants you a PhD? How are they gonna help you achieve your goals? You should outline what you want to do after the PhD. What do you envision doing with the PhD when you get it? Do you want to be a professor? Do you want to go into industry? Or you might even envision doing postdocs in another field to bring the specialized training that you can only receive in that department over to a new venue. That's, that's what I did. Having an eye on what you want to do after you leave is going to help show that a few stumbles in the graduate program aren't going to make you crash and burn. If you have a broader objective, then that's something that will keep many people motivated through the inevitable pitfalls. Think like a boxer. You don't want to punch the surface with a tap. You want to punch through someone. You need to extend the pitch beyond just the PhD. It will have way more impact that way. Now, other things that you can think about that will answer the why them question are things like this. Does the university have specialty equipment that is hard to find elsewhere that you can envision using for your work? Is the department known for having a strong specialization in a particular field of study? Is it close to a lot of startups or other industries that will enable you to connect your work with real world setting? Is there a nearby natural laboratory that does work in something that you're actually interested in? And possibly, are there faculty that also collaborate with them? For instance, there could be a prominent cancer center nearby that you might want to collaborate with and where you can apply the tools that you will be learning in graduate school over to what they're doing. For me, I do a bunch of work in tomography, the mathematical field behind CT scanners. And these are tools that open the door to interactions with the Moffitt Cancer Center adjacent to the University of South Florida. The big question that the committee will have is whether or not you can fit in the department and also be successful. Your transcripts will speak to this to a limited degree. You can have amazing grades in the core courses, but that doesn't always point to someone that will succeed as a researcher. Describing previous research you might have done in undergrad will help, and especially having a plan for the future will help too. It will show that you have seriously thought about what the PhD will actually do for you. 
Of course, together with personal statements are things like getting solid letters of recommendation, which might actually be more important. I have a video on that coming down the pipeline, and when it's ready, I'll put it right here. Thank you so much for watching, good luck, and I hope you have a good day.